Hey there, today we're looking in Math 8 at Unit 1, Lesson 12, talking about congruent polygons. And we have to decide if figures are congruent, which we said before means they are going to be the same in terms of their lengths, and in terms of their angle measurements, they're going to be the same. So the first thing you looked at here was whether or not, um, it says all these triangles are congruent, but you had to decide which one showed that they are images under a translation. Remember, a translation means it's a slide only. A lot of these have been rotated, or they've been turned, or they've been uh, reflected. So the ones that are a, a slide only means it's going the same exact direction. So for example, this one here would be a translation. It's just sliding from place to place, as would this one here and this one right here. These three triangles are simple translations. While they're all congruent, there are rotations and reflections that cause these ones to look the way that they do. When you moved on to the next thing in the class today, we were talking about congruent pairs, deciding whether they were congruent or not. And perhaps the thing you looked at were matching parts, deciding, well, what could take a shape from one place to another? You can always use a piece of tracing paper to decide if it is congruent, right? You could take a shape like this, and we could trace it over here, and simply rotate it, translate it, and get it where it needs to be to see if it matches there. So in this case, we would say, yes, it is a congruent shape, but you could also notice things, similar things, like this length from G to F is one, which matches that one there. But after the bend, it seems to slide over two, and this goes over two. Before the bend over here at the point, we're going a diagonal two spaces. We're going up two over one. Here we're gonna go opposite down two over one. We match there. So we see a lot of matching parts between those two shapes. That's something that you don't see over here. While you might have the same number of sides, one, two, three, four, five, here, one, two, three, four, five, there's something very different about both of these shapes. Hopefully you notice that those shapes are not the same. This has a set of parallel lines and there are no parallel lines in this one. Many other ways you could describe the differences there if you wanted to. You had another shape over here, number three, that you looked at. And just because it's been moved around a little bit doesn't necessarily mean that it is different. Again, I like to look at things like perhaps my short line is two lengths long. Here the short line is also two lengths long. And so then look at the measurement for what, how to get from the short length to this other one over here of this obtuse angle. I can see I'm going down two and over one, two, three, four. So what happens if I go over here, one, two, do I also go four? One, two, three, four, I sure do. So that same points can be the same. Once I have two matching points, I'm pretty much sure that they're gonna be the same. I could look here though, look on the diagonal line, I'm going one, two, three, four segments diagonally, one, two, three, four segments diagonally, and I would say yes, these are congruent there. Whereas number four, we can see that while they're the same shape and uh, the same idea, these are both octagons, they are different lengths, aren't they? This has lengths of two across the top right there, and here I'm only going about mm, less than two, probably about one and three fourths right here, and this is length of two. So they're similar, but they are not congruent. All right, and that's what you're taking a look at. You had some more shapes that you perhaps analyzed in your class here that you might say, well, what's happening from this one to that one? Well, we could take the tracing paper again. You could have drawn a sketch of it like so, and then you could have rotated it 90 degrees and then translate it over to seeing did it does it match up and it did match up there we could look at some shapes like the ones here and recognize that while there's some similarities perhaps with maybe the perimeter the area is quite different here right this has an area of one two three four five six seven eight this has an area of one two three four five so the areas are completely different let alone the fact that the shapes look incredibly different as well Sometimes the shapes are just simple reflections and translations, or one or the other. In this case here, we can see that we have an area of one square there, we have an area of one square there, and we have half a, uh, we'll, we'll try and go half a square there. So we have the same area. Well, that's in good shape so far. I can check my lengths and notice that this length here is a length of two, this is a length of two. We have a base of one, a base of one, a height of one, height of one, and a diagonal of one as well. So everything looks to be the same. We would definitely say this would be congruent. For number four, you had some shapes where you had a square and a rhombus. And the key thing to look at here was that these angles were gonna be different, weren't they? So you have an angle measurement right here for angle H. So I'm just gonna trace that H angle right there. 
And when I put this angle H over here on this square, we notice that it doesn't quite line up, does it? Because a square should be there, and this is not going to be square. So this would be a no for this one in this case here. 5 was a good one to look at because it sure does look pretty close, doesn't it? It looks like we have two squares. But even with the two squares, because this grid paper is squared, I notice that I have a length of 3 here. But I have a length here of 1, 2. I know it's a diagonal, but it's a square, so that means it's, it's going to be the same length there, uh, possibly. So I could trace it and find that as well to see, is that accurate, what's going on? And as I trace this image here, and then rotate it 45 degrees here, and slide it up there, I can see that, oh, in this case here, this one seemed to work. Oh my goodness, what's going on there? Oh, well, it's close. It's a little bit too too long. I should probably make a better sketch there to make sure because my sketch is not clean. So why are you going to take your time there? So I'm going to make a perfect one if I can because it's not going to be exact. It's close. It's super, super close. But when I take it, I notice that it's just a little bit too, notice here, a little bit too long, a little bit too wide. Not much, just a little bit there. So that's a close one. If you eyeball it, it looks about right, but this would actually be a no. It's not going to work quite right there. Okay. So in summary, what we looked at is that to find out if a figure is congruent, it needs to be exactly like the other one. Exactly like it. Same length, same angles, everything's going to be the same. And as long as you have a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections that move things around and they match up exactly, you're going to have a congruent shape there. If it's not going to be exact, it's not congruent. So on today's homework, what you were looking at were some shapes and trying to decide if these were congruent. The first one says show that these two pentagons are congruent. Find the lengths of A, B, C, D, E and the angle measures of F, G, H, I, J. So to prove that this is going to be a congruent shape, what would be good would be to take the shape drawing here and to make a sketch of it and let's see what happens. So I take the shape and we trace it and we trace it and we trace it and we trace it and I can take that shape and what I like to do here is I notice that I have a line on like one of these little squares right right I have my square there's my square which means to me oops sorry about that so I trace it I have my line I have a diagonal on one of these squares so if I was going to do it a rotation a rotation I could take this square and I can rotate it 90 degrees to make the, ni the next one there. So I just make my little square 90 degrees my little angles point in the opposite direction. Notice when I do that now I can translate this all the way over and I could translate down one and we snap right onto place there don't we? Yep we sure do. So these are going to be the same. These are congruent. Now to label them, that means I have to come back and I have to label the parts that match here. So BC, my short line here matches over here, which was 1.4. The long one to go from, uh, which is going to go down 2 over 1 or over 2 down 1 here, this is a 2.2. So I'm going this way on my circle here or my, tri my, my shape. So I'm going to keep going. So the next one becomes a 2.8 there. Moving around to 4.1, so 4.1, and my last one is a 3.2. So those are my exterior measurements for that shape. Interior measurements, where the 1.4 and 2.2 come together, 1.4, 2.2 come together, we said it's 108 degrees right there. Now the tiny point, 1.4 and 3.2, come together here at 117. I keep on going down to 94, keep on going to 59. And the last one here, this big one, is 162. So that's what I end up having when I rotate that around. You'll want to probably label those. Your teacher probably would want you to label things like uh, A, B equals 2.2 and so on. And then B, C, C, D, D, E, and then E, A. And so E, A is here, 2.8. So that's what those ones would look like there for the measurements. For the angles, you could have the measurement of angle F, G, H, I, and J. Angle F measurement was 59 degrees, and you could fill in the rest of those there. I'm going to let you do that, okay? For number two, for each pair of shapes, decide whether the, or not the two shapes are congruent or not. Explain your reasoning. For the first one, 
one of the things I notice is I see that this drop down is one and this one's one. So it's looking good so far. Then I got an angle one, one. Again, looking good so far. Now when I go from here to here, it's hard to say. I can tell that I'm moving over one, two, three, four, five, and then up two. So I should have something similar. One, two, three, four, up two. Now that's a problem. The four, two compared to the five, two is a little bit different. But then notice this as well. This one has a length of one, two, three, and this has a length of one, two, three, four. So there's clearly something not right with those. We would say these are not congruent because they have a different length on the, the CD and HG have a different length, which pulls this one out a little bit longer as well. When you look at letter B, it's something similar. We're gonna have a little shape here. You could take your tracing paper and try to redraw this if you chose to. We notice that this is, I like for the little ones first, I got AB, which is one little block long, matches up with KL. All right, that looks pretty good. I can see here I'm going kind of over out one and up two. So out one, up two, that's looking good there. That's good kind of matching length, things are looking nice. This is a length of three, one, two, three. What's this one gonna be? One, two, three. So, so far, things seem to line up. Here we go, one, two, and down. Here we go, one, two, and over. So that's that same kind of pattern, one, two, and over. And I'm not quite always saying down or over the same way because they are have been rotated. This one's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and a two. So let's see what I have here. One, two, three, four, five, and two. So that's looking great right there, going the same direction. And one more piece to go. We go out one, and then up one, two, three, four. Let's we go out one, and then we go one, two, three, four. So it looks great. So when we do some kind of measuring around, they sure do seem to be similar. I could confirm that, of course, by using the tracing paper and drawing out a copy of the original. And after I have the copy of the original, I could take a look and see what happens here. It sure does look like this guy's gonna rotate until it gets up to about here. All right, something like that. So I got a nice rotation. I'm gonna translate it down, translate it over, and it lines up right on top of this one nicely right there. So this is gonna be definitely congruent there. You get to explain your reasoning though for how that's gonna work, whether you're measuring the segments, whether you show by mirroring and rotation, that's up to you. Number, letter C, same idea. We have two circles here for C. Circles, because they are a circle, they have a radius. This radius is two. We can look here, it has a length of two, has a length of two, for a pencil for two, another one of two. We check C, it goes up one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Because they have the same length for the radius and they match the same thing, we can see that, yep, these are gonna be congruent. We would have to be able to show it there. It's, it's a translation over. You could say it's done rotation. You decide how you wanna look at that. Number three, it says draw segment PQ. All right, we'll draw segment PQ. I'm gonna draw a P and a Q. So I'm gonna draw segment PQ and I'm gonna make it equal to two inches. So P and Q. When PQ is rotated around point R, the resulting segment is the same as PQ. Where could R be located? This is really review from lesson eight. What they're asking about is, do you remember that to make it match up exactly, we have to find the midpoint. So the midpoint of my segment, in this case, because I made it two inches, would be at one, right there, that would become point R as my midpoint. I could double check that and confirm that by drawing the shape here, drawing my line, putting my midpoint there at R, doing a 180 degree rotation, and making sure that it lines up just right. Okay, so that's the idea there. The key is to remember that it's the midpoint that allows you to have that same exact shape. And finally, number four, here's trapezoid A, B, C, D. Using rigid transformations on the trapezoid, build a pattern and describe some of the rigid transformations that you made, that you took. And that's up to you how you wanna do that there. So perhaps you just drew a shape like this and you took it and maybe you just did what we've been doing in several other examples, a 90 degree rotation, 180 degree rotation, and then maybe a 270. So if you did a 90 degree, you would snap it in place something like this 
All right? And so then you'd have that there, that there, that there, and there. We can look out here. It didn't quite line up very nicely. I can barely see it. Barely see it. It's there though. There and there. Cool. And do the same thing again. Maybe you do that a couple times until you get uh, four different transformations. So you're going to do it there to make a pattern and you can make your own pattern by doing that. Perhaps create that windmill that we've been doing before. You decide what you want to look like there, how you want to make that happen. Okay, I'm going to let you do that on your own and make your own little shape there, your own pattern. And good luck and have a great day.